Hello friends, in this short video today I'm going to show you how to tinker a little different. And be sure to watch to the end of this video because I have a special announcement. Alright, let's just jump into it. Over here to my left we see we have an SE30. What you're going to see today applies to the SE as well. And you can see that I have the motherboard completely pulled outside the case. Now there are going to be times that you're going to want to be able to do this because maybe you're going to want to swap out the RAM, swap out ROM, uh, play around with an accelerator card, a PDS card. Obviously when you're swapping you want to have the power turned off, but uh, basically you want to do some kind of manipulation and then power on and do some testing. And if you don't pull the motherboard completely outside the chassis, then what you're going to have to do is pull it out, do your swap, put it back in, take time to wire everything up, do a test, maybe the test fails, and then you have to disconnect and pull it out again and again and again. And it's just really time consuming and troublesome. Now you've probably seen this type of setup in other YouTubers videos, Adrian's Digital Basement, maybe even on Bruce's um, Brankus Creations channel. Um, but basically what I'm going to show you today is how to accomplish that. And as you can see here, we've got a black cable that's extending the main power cable. Now the main power cable is only about uh, 24 centimeters, it's less than a foot long, and only comes to the very rightmost edge of the chassis. So you're not going to be able to pull it out doing that. So you need another cable. And what I found is the best overall solution. The idea did not originate with me, but uh, I actually read it on a forum quite a while back, is you need an ATX power supply cable. Now this is just one example of such a cable. This is the uh, Silverstone brand. Um, this is a white one. And as you can see here, I, I actually have a black one. This is the packaging PP07-MB with the last letter being B for black or W for white. And you will need to have an ATX power supply that's 24 pin one end male, one end female. And basically that's all you really need. Uh, some people say you don't even need to cut off the cable, you can just slide it in. Uh, but as you can see here, I've got a socketed upgrade and in that case you're not going to be able to fit an uncut cable connector, that 24 pin very wide connector, into here because the accelerator is in the way. Also, there are some variations of the SC30 motherboard where there's a component here. So even if you don't have an accelerator here, still that component will interfere and prevent you from sliding it down. So what I did is I took the cable, the, in the case of this black cable, and I cut off the portion that I didn't need. So all you need are the 14 wires. So if I take this cable out just to show you. Um, basically you're going to be cutting off part. And how did I cut it off? I just used a, a pair of cutters like this. Nothing really too special about them. Uh, they're mainly used for cutting wire. And I was able to cut through the plastic fairly easily. And the end result is the edge is a little bit jagged, but uh, honestly for testing purposes that really doesn't matter and you're not going to worry too much about that. The other reason that I chose this particular Silverstone cable is uh, because the manufacturer advertises it as a 16 gauge, 16 AWG uh, cable. Unfortunately it seems that Silverstone wasn't being completely honest on their Amazon listing information with about 16 gauge because when I pulled out one of the wires and then removed the white braid on it, I could see right away, I said, that's just, you know, too thin to be 16 gauge wire. I then put the wire under my microscope so I could read the markings. Now, I don't know about you, but that certainly doesn't look like a six to me. <laughs> it looks like 18 AWG, right? And while I am extremely disappointed with Silverstone for having lied to me in their listing, that's actually not a problem because have a look at the stock SE30 power cable. Yep, you're, you're saying it correct. That's 22 AWG. You know, unbelievable because for years I thought, based upon the external thickness of the wire, surely this must be 18 gauge. But in fact, 
It's super thin 22 gauge. Take a look at that. It's primarily insulation. This is 600 volt rated, so the insulation is much thicker than the Silverstone, which is 300 volt rated. So what does all this mean? Basically, electrically speaking, everything is okay. In terms of the transaction, well, I'm not too pleased with Silverstone for lying to me, but that's something separate, okay? Uh, because in this particular case, we know that the stock cable, despite looking like an 18 gauge cable, in fact, the wires on the inside are quite a thin 22 gauge stranded set. And so the fact that we have a known 18 gauge cable, which is thicker, is just fine. Because whenever you extend a cable, you will always want to go thicker than your stock cable. And the reason why is because if you use the same 22 gauge wire to extend this cable, you will add resistance to it. And when you add resistance, you're going to experience somewhat of a little bit of a voltage drop. And so to eliminate that voltage drop, or at least lessen it, uh, you would go with an 18 gauge or even better 16 gauge cable. Uh, if you use a 22 gauge, it will still work. It will still work. And you're not going to get a substantial voltage drop that would prevent it from working. It's just if you can do it, get a thicker gauge. But keep in mind that I was tricked by Silverstone. They advertised 16 and I got 18. So who knows? If you go with 18, you might end up with 22. And if you choose 22, you might even get a 26. You, you got to watch out with some of these Chinese factories. I, I mean, I had high hopes that they were being honest with me, but clearly they were not. And that could hold true for other cables as well. But again, I'm just using Silverstone as one example that I purchased. Uh, I probably should have purchased a bunch of others just to show you, but you never know about the, the consistency of quality with cables. Just know that going thicker wherever possible is the best approach. And what you need basically is a 24 pin ATX cable that has a male on one end and female on the other. And then you're good to go. In addition to that, when, whenever you pull out your motherboard, you are also going to want to be able to have some, some kind of sound you want to be able to ha hear the beeps of your speaker too. So the solution is actually something I introduced in my Rominator video. In that video, I introduced these pretty nifty wires. It has a male on one end and a female on the other end. And these can be purchased through Amazon. Again, links for you in the text description below. But basically, I just used a pair of these to extend the speaker wire. And that way I get sound too. Now, there are other things that you might want to extend as well. Uh, I have my, you can see I've got a SCSI cable and a hard drive that's already pulled out, so that's not a problem. Um, this is a fairly nice long cable, so it's, it makes it easy to draw the power from the analog board and then, of course, connect SCSI too. But the thing is, the internal floppy drive, the ribbon cable, I've not found a good replacement for that. So if you want to have a floppy drive, and if you don't want to use the floppy EMU, I mean, that, that's actually a pretty good idea, you know, to use a floppy EMU. But if you really want to pull the motherboard out and test a real floppy, then your best bet is to use a real floppy drive like this. And then, of course, with this, all you have to do is just plug it into the external floppy drive connector, and then your problem is solved. Uh, you would not use the internal floppy disk drive at all. So you wouldn't have to worry about that cable. But if any of you do happen to have a way uh, to extend the length of the internal ribbon cable, you, please let me know. And that might be kind of a nifty solution for, uh, for some of you. Now let's give our extension cable a test. You'll note that I have my external floppy drive connected, the mouse connected, also a hard drive connected. We've got the socketed 50 megahertz Daystar power cache accelerator connected. I've got my speaker wires extended here. And I have a fluke uh, voltage meter set. So that it will measure on the five volt line on the internal floppy disk connector with the ground connected at the chassis ground where the power supply connects. So now it's time to flip the power for the smoke test. And we got the beep just fine about 4.85 volts. So now uh, we can just do voltage measurements, other kind of testing. Um, you know, the voltage was a little bit low at first. It's going up to 4.9. It's a little bit lower than five because um, we've got some accelerators and other things going on here. But 
basically we can just do all manner of testing now which is the purpose of bringing the motherboard outside the case and that's really the tip for today folks uh, on how to tinker on your board uh, i should say a little disclaimer here as you can see this disc is wooden that means it's not a conductive surface and that is extremely important so you don't want to do anything like you see here on a metal desk or anything uh, where there's metal or something that's on the bottom of the board that could short out. So I, I would highly recommend a wooden desk above anything else. Um, but uh, some other kind of insulator, you know, if you use papers or something else, you're just going to make sure that the bottom side is a solder side. You don't want those little um, pointy feet to poke a hole through it and then connect to some kind of metal surface beneath. So just make sure you're working on a insulated surface and then you'll be good to go and that's basically our video today just wanted to share that little tip and hopefully it uh, will bring a benefit to you tinkerers out there and uh, you can get some more enjoyment in testing your max especially if you're if you're doing voltage measurements because if you if you want to do voltage measurements with the circuit board inside the chassis you're going to have to run wires and that's kind of dangerous you might short out something so it's really best to do your tinkering work with the board pulled out like this now for my <laughs> announcement this has been long in coming um, but i basically told you folks in a previous video that i have something coming up and i didn't tell you what it was and i just said i think you're going to like it well now the time is here for me to tell you about it and the answer is, it is a new forum. And we are calling it Tinker Different. Where have you heard something similar to that before, right? Um, but we really are different. And I just want to say that this forum is made for the community because it's made by people who are a part of the community. I mean, I'm part of the community, but it, the idea did not originate with me. I am one of the members who helped to bring it together, but actually we have a large number of members, a surprising number of members. And I just like to start out by just saying a few words of thanks to our very first founding member, who was the, the gentleman who brought me into it in the first place, and that is Mr. Fahrenheit. Now, Mr. Fahrenheit works in a certain type of job where his identity does need to be concealed, so uh, I'm only going to introduce his uh, online forum handle. Uh, but basically, some of you probably know the name. You've seen him around in other places on the internet before. He's a wonderful person. I've known him for a very, very long time. And he approached me the first week of July this year in 2021 and asked me if I would like to join an effort in putting a new forum together with him and the team of other people. Now, before I get too involved in that, I'd just like to say him asking me to do that was not the first time I had been asked. I was actually asked for the very first time last year in 2020 by another person. He didn't give me permission to mention his name, so I won't mention it, but um, he is uh, just another fellow forum member of another forum. And he came and approached me and said, James, you know, let's, there are certain reasons why we need to get something going and uh, let's get a forum started. And I did take it in under consideration. I did think about it very, very deeply. Um, but to be honest, it was just, I didn't think two people could do it. I didn't think two people could effectively do the job that they needed to do uh, to put a great forum together. And I had other reasons too. It's not because I was lazy or I didn't want to spend any money on it or anything like that. I really thought it was a great idea. but. I just didn't think that two people could do it and I had some other reasons as well. And so I basically, very politely, I, I told him no. I declined that, that particular opportunity. And then a few months later, um, I was approached by Stephen Arsenault uh, and he said this the same, very same thing. He said, you know, let's get something going. And I, of course, gave him my reasons why, you know, I just, just didn't think that the two of us could get it going. But he had a lot of fervor and I mean, he talked to me for a number of months privately through email and he even started up uh, some, some basics of a forum himself. And he really had some great ideas, but I just didn't, uh, I didn't join in that effort. 
And then it was Mr. Fahrenheit, who was the third person that approached me the first week of July of 2021. And there was a, we'll just call it an event <laughs> that happened at the very end of June in 2021 um, that involved data loss. But even worse than that, it involved the brutalization of a friend of mine, Kai Robinson. And Kai hasn't been a friend of mine for years and years and years. We actually became friends this year. And it doesn't matter if we were friends or not. It just what, what happened to him was just totally uncalled for. And I'm taking a deep breath here because it just, it shouldn't have happened. And so there were a lot of reasons why Mr. Fahrenheit came to me uh, in the first place to create a forum. And I just said to him, okay. I agreed. I agreed to move forward because the timing was right. And he also had a team of other people. So it wasn't just going to be me and one other person. He really had it very well thought out. And I really liked that approach. So I agreed to it, especially when he told me some of the other names that he was thinking about bringing on board. And so this, just to kill off any crazy rumors out there, some of you may have heard that oh, this is some kind of uh, tinker different is the creation of, of James, JDW, and Kai Robinson. And that's not true at all. We are both a part of it, but there are many other people who are involved. And again, the idea did not originate with us. We were just asked if we'd like to join, and we did. And we have contributed to it. But it started off uh, with people such as uh, Mark Jositis of MacFX. You know, we have, all of our founding members are just people in the community but uh, admittedly, some do have influence. I mean, even I have influence because I have a YouTube channel. Um, but um, we have other people in our group that are enthusiasts. We have other people who are big names. If you know the name Macintosh Garden, I mean, who, who among you haven't downloaded anything from Mac Macintosh Garden? Christian Bergman is also on our board of directors. And uh, he was, I mean, has just been incredible in the amount of time and what he has invested uh, to our effort but we also have a number of other people i mean big names like bruce rain from brankus creations we also have steve mac 84 who has his own youtube channel um, we've got uh, zane kaminsky who as you know from garrett's workshop has some amazing products that he puts out for sale um, we've got uh, a total of 13 members myself included, who came together to put this forum into place, to come up with the domain name, to uh, create the logo, uh, to come up with the server. I mean, we have server people, Christian Bergman, uh, but we also have Eric Helgeson of Blue Scuzzy, uh, who's been a big help on the server side too. Uh, we wanted to put a forum together to eliminate data loss to eliminate that possibility. So in the worst possible case, we'd lose maybe 24 hours. Um, and we have that, we've tested it. We know that this is going to be reliable. We also wanted to bring together a team of people who felt the same, that bullying has no place on a forum, that we want people to be able to join and have fun. You know, that's what it's about, to enjoy themselves, to not have to to be fearful all the time that something bad is gonna happen or that they're gonna be bullied by a forum gatekeeper. A gatekeeper is a designated troll, someone who looks around and if they see somebody in the forum who isn't towing the line in their opinion, who isn't perfectly obeying those endless forum rules, then they're gonna bully that other person. And that's what happened to Kai Robinson. I mean, it happened to me. And some forum administrators like that. They consider those type of people keeping the, the group in line. Well, at Tinker Different, we don't. I mean, you could praise the administration team all you want, but if you're around bullying other people, that has no place in our forum. So we put an end to bullying, but we, we have common sense guidelines. We don't even call them rules. We have a long version and a short version, but basically the Bill and Ted rule of be, be excellent to each other is what we believe. <laughs> Uh, don't talk about religion and politics, right? And uh, don't bully other people and don't do anything illegal. It's just common sense stuff that we don't even really need to say it. We do have a longer version that talks about what ifs and all that. 
but um, really we created a place that's for you and is going to ultimately be by you. Because even though we have 13 members now, we, we have put a system in place to where people that have founded it will be elected, you'll go through a term, and we'll have term limits so that you cannot have a perpetual king on the throne. And eventually, uh, even our president, we have a person who's, who has the title of president, uh, even that person will move out of his role. So all 13 people will eventually move out of their roles and folks such as yourself will need to be voted in. So this is truly created by vintage computing enthusiasts for folks such as yourself. And it's not Mac only either. It's also for other platforms. We even have a, a sub forum for Acorn. <laughs> uh, and uh, so we have some pretty amazing things. We believe in transparency, showing you where the funding is going. Right now, because we're just starting out, our 13 members, myself included, are making contributions to keep it going. But whenever you pay, you kind of have certain rights. And we'd like to loosen that up a bit and allow contributions for people outside the administration to be able to fund us either through PayPal or Patreon or through special merchandise that we're preparing. We've got a lot of great things coming, folks. So you're gonna be able to read more about it on the forum itself. We've created a YouTube channel that we're gonna have videos that'll come out and tell you more about it. But the best thing you can do right now is come on over to the forum and sign up, register. And when you do that, um, you're gonna to have to confirm your email. And then once your email is confirmed, then an administrator will have a look and approve you. And you'll be approved fairly quickly and then you can get in and post. And we've got some amazing stuff. Uh, you can edit your posts for as long as you'd like. It's not limited to 40 crazy minutes. You can edit hours later, a day later, a week later, which is a, a godsend in my opinion. Uh, in other forums, they limit you so that if you made a spelling error and then you I realized it two hours later, oh, time up, you can't change it. Well, on our forum, you don't have that kind of problem. Last but not least, I'd like to say we do not compete with other groups like Facebook groups or Discord because those are very different platforms. And I, inv I invited Scott Barrett uh, from the Vintage Apple Macintosh Enthusiast Facebook group, which I'm a member of, uh, to check out our forum, forum during the beta stage. And it was really my way of saying, hey, we're not competing. Uh, we believe that we have two very distinct platforms and you know how Facebook is. It, it's, it's a little bit more scrunched up. Uh, you don't have text editing features. You can't color the text, underline, uh, italic, and do, do all the kinds of things that you can in a, in a dedicated forum. Uh, Facebook has its place though, and I certainly will remain active in the Vintage Apple Macintosh Enthusiast Group, Low End Mac, and all of those because I use Facebook to keep in touch with friends and family back at home. I live in Japan and I wanna keep in touch with them. Uh, but these days I tend to find I spend more time in the Facebook groups than I do with my friends and family. And that's not gonna go away. That's not gonna go away. And technically speaking, we're not trying to undermine any other forums either. Although it is true that we have different um, guidelines. Uh, we don't rule with an iron fist and it could be that some people will flock over to us. I mean, realistically, it could be true. But I don't think that any other existing forums have a lot to worry about because they have, in many cases, tons and tons, decades of, of uh, pre-existing posts and a lot of content that will keep a lot of people there. So uh, for that reason, they have a good magnet to keep people there. But I would just like to say that we offer something special a lot of people who are major content creators, such as Kai Robinson and others, are on our forum and will exclusively post content in our forum. So you'll be able to see those posts, you'll be able to see um, all of that that you, you're not going to be able to find anywhere else. And again, we're about fun, folks. We are about <laughs> helping you <laughs> to enjoy yourself. So if you've been kicked out of another forum, uh, if you've been kicked out because you're a spammer, you're obviously not gonna be welcome on ours, but if you've been kicked out for crazy reasons, because you didn't see eye to eye with the forum administration, because they didn't understand proper de-escalation techniques, which is what we do believe in, you're gonna be welcome in our forum and you're not gonna have a difficult time. And I know that there are some of you out there who have just said, I'm done with forums because they're all the same. The bullying, 
from sometimes from the top down. It's just crazy. And we agree it's crazy. And that's why we created a forum that doesn't have that. So please come on by our forum. We've got a feedback section. You're not going to be given a warning point for giving us feedback. Uh, yeah, I've, I've gotten a warning, for, a warning point before because I made suggestions like that. Crazy. Make your, give us feedback, good or bad. You can give us feedback in public. We're not going to shame you. I mean, it's just, we believe in freedom of speech, freedom of expression. We're not a replacement for a parlor or anything like that because we don't deal in politics, but we really do want you to express yourself without fear. So come on by. You'll find the link in the text description below. Let us know what you think. And let me know what you think of this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content like this, please subscribe. And once, once you're subscribed, please click the bell icon to receive notifications when I come out with a new video. Thanks for watching to the end, folks. Take care and have a great week.